I'll start discussing with the different stocks. And one of the stock is Air Canada. So you can see it on my screen. So a full stock, I'm picking it myself and the rest uh, you, you can you know add on and comment or you can say uh, any you can say during the discussion what stocks you want to discuss upon and we can uh, take on your request so first stock is like air canada most of the guys are trading in this stock just let me know guys if you are really trading in this stock or i'm just assuming that we will be trading in it if you are trading then i'm going to discuss it if you're not trading then it's no use of discussing this stock rather we can move on to the next stock which is commonly traded in our group yes guys yeah let's discuss there are people trading uh, i also uh, have it, it in my portfolio okay so everyone i want everyone to be on uh, unmute and that's be more yeah. interactive let's discuss air uh, canada chorus scl mir please one by one the, have you say all together i forget <laughs> okay I'll, I'll, okay yes i'll remember air canada okay Let's sure. air guys canada. unmute and you know just start discussing rather than the one or two person speaking i want everyone to have some words say it any question if you think your question will be like very simple small stupid anything don't worry it's better to ask this question rather than losing your money so unmute and interact i can see like many of the guys have unmuted good and uh, still some of them are on mute okay you can ask questions while i'm discussing you can ask in between don't wait for the time that i will end up and then i will say okay you can ask questions ask in between okay so i'm starting in the air canada guys do you remember that i shared one of uh, in the group i shared one of the one analysis on the ac yeah you got yep. a chance to see that yeah yesterday before the close of yeah. the day right Yesterday, mm -hmm. I shared one PDF file in which the, it was the same graph there, same technical chart there, and with the view like this. And I have pointed out some of the points here. Like you can see these three, four points. These seem to be, you know, the previously they, they were the resistance levels. And now it has, uh, in the previous week, it crossed this resistance. Then when it fall down again, so the previous, the idea is when it, the previous resistance, if it has been crossed, becomes a support next time. So this, I'm expecting this level of 19.40 to be acting as a support for this Canada stock. By the way, Canada, Air Canada moved up here, bounce back, here bounce back, again the same level of around somewhere around 19.5, back again, back, back, but here, like on the last week on Wednesday, on, on Monday, it crossed up so it gave the breakout and gave a closing which was above the previous support uh, previous resistance level it broke the resistance and went up to 23.59 to be exact on that day it went up so it had break the resistance so like most of the people can take entry from here and uh, you know you can expect the stock going up because it has broke the resistance but unfortunately the next day it went down due to unforeseen conditions in the market it went down so this breakout could be considered as a false breakout because it didn't form the other candle above but the good thing is when it started going down uh, this one uh, level of 19.4 acted as a resistance previously and now it can be taken as a support so here you can see the one day it went down and again the, the last session it went up so this up candle, which is formed in the last session on Friday, seems to be, you know, little bit encouraging, although it's not very highly probable that stock is changing its uh, trend, but still you can see that it has moved upward, point number one. Number two, it seems that it is trying to take a support at this level of 17.5 and it's reverting back. So if I draw a trend line from here, so just to better analyze this situation, you can see. Uh, sir, we... Sahi, can I ask a question, please? Yep. So, um, how do you calculate the support and the resistance again? Like, I can't. Really I can't hear you. Right. Can you speak a little loudly? Yeah. So my question is, how do you calculate the support and the resistance? 
okay support and resistance support is actually the point which acts as a floor and prevents the price from falling it below that level and it has been tested many times by the market okay and the resistance is on the reverse resistance is a ceiling which prevents the price from going beyond that level and it has been tested by the market many times for example you see here this point this point was acting as a resistance before it prevented the price to uh, to cross this point and then here it also it prevented the price to go up here also you can see uh, it did not resist it many times but it, these two are considered to be the strong resistance and here this point and it has it should be touching at least two two candles so th this one this one here also it resisted and gave a closing at this level so this can be acted as a resistance and same goes with the support oh. okay and uh, support is on the other hand so what i was saying that the trend line so this was a trend line uh, this stock yeah. seems to be you know in this trend and we can exp if we clone this and let's see how it is behaving so you can see the next target to be at this level if it crosses this level if it really takes support and you know the market on the friday was like positive unlike thursday which was a huge negative market friday it was positive and we are expecting a similar week not a very uh, bullish week next week but still you know it, it can be a good trading week so if it responds to the market uh, volatility it can go up further to this level of 20 four but before that it will face a resistance at 23 because it rebounds or bounced back from this level of 23 so the 20 the level of 23 you can see if i draw the horizontal resistance level at this point you can see a uh, resistance at this level of Okay, let's make it red and increase. Okay, so this point here, one, two, it's let to be more precise here. If we can. Somewhere here. But it, it is not like very strong one, not a very strong resistance because we are getting like just two, two points matching here and some uh, a week here which is approaching near to the resistance level it is not it is not considered as a very strong resistance but still we can consider this as uh, uh, you know while we are doing our analysis so it can uh, you know reach to this level of 23.42 again and can bounce back so you can have your you know target price set a little below 23.42 so there can be two conditions either it will you know pass on 23.42 and move further upward if it goes further upward then you can re-enter this trade again but there can be situation that it will hit this and buy back uh, and bounce back so in order to prevent it uh, your you know uh, the minimization of your profit you can plan your target at 22.45 or you can say like 23 somewhere around 23 you can plan your target if you are in profit if you're in profit just realize it when it touches 23 and then wait for it if it goes further down then buy again and the further down level will be again at somewhere around, around this point of 19.5 next time next time it might not go till this level of 17 the guys who are waiting for this to again who will wait, there will be some guys who will wait for this again to come of 17.5 but it might not go if we follow this trend here also you can see the last time it fall down to 13 so you might you guys might be waiting again this time here when we were at this point to fall back fall back again till 13 but it did not went till this level it went only till 15 a little higher than the previous low and here also uh, on in the, during the last week you might you guys like might be waiting for the stock to again come back to 15 level or some guys like very sharp okay let's buy it at 12 but it did not uh, hit till 15 it stood till 17 and the next target based on this next the buying target when if it goes below then will be around somewhere here around 19 so you need to take care of this uh, this trend line okay so the uh, right now the strategy should be hold on don't sell it and the selling price should be around 23 and 
uh, after 20 uh, 23 you if you are in profit hold it if you uh, if you are in profit sell it realize the profit if you are in loss you can you know go with the the same concept if you are trader or you are you you are you are the investor so in the loss better to hold so at 23 if it goes beyond this level it can hit like 24 sometime like 24.5 or something like that then you can see if it going it is going above this 24.5 then you can re-enter the trade from here or the other situation will be like after hitting this 23.5 level it goes below if it goes below then it can reach again to 19.5 and then you can re-enter the trade one very very important thing guys whenever there is a change uh, whenever there is a movement in the stock like if we check it from here the lowest point 15 and the highest point 23 so you will enter the trade somewhere here in between this line and uh, and you know it is very important to note that you cannot earn the hundred percent profit off from that trade what is like hundred percent like 15.68 let's round it to like 16 and like 23 so you it is very very rare like you bought the uh, stock at 16 and you sold it at like 23 like this will be like seven dollars gain so this is like a hundred percent gain. You can never ever have this seven percent, uh, the seven dollar gain, which is like hundred percent. You will be entering the trade once it has already moved up somewhere like seventeen, and you will be coming out of the trade somewhere below twenty three point five, like I mentioned, like 20, the amount of twenty three or twenty two point nine. So your profit will be in this range, and no one can ever have this uh, except you are a long term investor. Then you might have a uh, stock here, and then you are selling it here. But at this point, you have lost an opportunity of rebuying it again. So that's a separate story. So my what and the point I'm trying to say is like hundred percent of the gain is not possible. Never look for this, and never regret if stock goes up after you have sold it. Whatever you could earn, you have already earned it. Be happy with that. Don't greed. Greed is a point where you start losing money. Let's say like you are holding it at 23.59 in the next session and you are saying, oh no, it will go further up. It has like prospects of going till 30. It might go till 30, but you don't know the time frame when it will go to 30. And you do not sell it. And the next day it fall down and, you know, take another round of dip and came till 19.5. You could have sold it here when it was higher, but you didn't sold it because you were saying that it will, you can earn a $1 more. The $1 more earning, actually you lost your $4 opportunity. You could have earned, though you will not sell it 19.5, but you have lost the opportunity again. So it's better to sell it here, buy it back again. And this is the market. Market will give you chances every day. And believe me, Air Canada is not the only stock in the market and it's not the only opportunity in the market. So what the, the point I'm trying to say is focus on your gains. If you are in the game, just realize it. Don't wait till it will go further up and you should have, you know, sold it at the higher price. Forget about that. Realize it when you are in profit based on your support and resistance level. Here, the technicals are saying if it, there is a resistance at this level, Sell it just below the um, sell your set your target below the resistance level and realize that gain. It may go further up and then you can you but don't say that it has gone up. Oh my God! I should have waited for a, one more day and sold it here. No, this shouldn't be your strategy. So stick to your strategy. Make a strategy and stick to that. If you keep on changing your strategy or you do not stick your strategy, you will not make a profit in the long run. One or few trades can give you a profit in the long run, you will be, you know, not maximizing your portfolio return. So just to summarize on this talk, those who have uh, this talk, hold it till it reaches this level of below the, sub, just below this, uh, the resistance level, 23.5 to be, you know, very higher extent, 23 to 23.5, sell it. And then if it goes down, buy it back around somewhere around 18, 19, or if it goes above this 24, then wait for a few green candles to be formed here above. And then you can enter the straight from here. And then next time this will be, this can be considered as a support level for this stock. So guys, any question on this Air Canada? Yep. So is it Magadhi suggests like currently 19.5, we suggest buying it now and so that it can be 22, 23, and then you sell it off. Uh, I lost you in between. Can you repeat two questions? So do you suggest like it's currently 19 and a half dollars? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you suggest buying it now and you just sell it when it reaches 23 as it has been reaching 23, right? Yes, you can. Based on the last day closing, you can. 
if you would have asked me this question on like on Thursday evening or Friday morning, I would say no. Why? Because now it has formed another candle, which is above. But during my discussion, if you can recall, I said that it is like likely not very strong. Why I said this? Because of the shape of the candle. If I increase the size here, this shape of the candle, this is the doji candle. The, and the doji is indecisive candle. What is okay. indecisive? Like still the bears and bulls are have not yet decided upon the trend, whether to take the stock up or take this strong down. The shape of this candle, the only thing which I doubt on this Air Canada stock is the shape, shape of the candle which is formed on the last tray. Why? Because uh, this is an a doji candle. Doji means indecisive. The opening, if you see the opening price of the stock and the closing price of the stock is the same because the, because there is no body, the same one thin line. Opening price and closing price remain the same. This is, uh, you know, a, a doji candle, indecisive candle. Still, uh, the buyers and the sellers are, the investors are not sure about the fate of this stock. It can go up or it can go down. But from the overall conclusion point of view, what I'm looking at is the market trend. The market is will be overall in you know a neutral to bullish trend, which will impact this uh, Air Canada and Air Canada very strong sentiments attached to it. So these points are you know are helping me to negate the impact of this dodgy candle. And the, at the bottom, and one more thing that it has you know given a downside price rejection a little bit. So these three things coupled together and let's see about the volumes. Volumes are above the average. So these three things coupled together, I can say, yes, you can, you can enter, but the if it forms the next candle above this, then it will be a strong buy. For Monday morning, uh, look at the market, the opening, if it gives you uh, a gap up opening, then yes, it's a strong buy, uh, not a strong, a medium buy. And uh, from the next Tuesday, if it goes on with the same trend, it gives a gap up opening again on Tuesday and uh, gives a closing, uh, uh, which is above the closing of Monday session, then it will be converted into like medium to strong buy. I hope that answers you. Yeah. Okay. The other thing here is like volumes. I told you volumes are, you know, uh, volumes are above the average. RSI, RSI seems to taking uh, support at, this level, you know, it hit at this level. And then again, this time it hit at this level. This time I was expecting this to hit at this level and bounce back, but it has gone a little bit down and then came again here again. So on Monday, if it is trading above, uh, you, uh, you know, above the opening price or above the closing price of the previous day, a green candle, then you will see this RSI to going up, up again. And it has, you know, it has a room to go up still. Currently it is at 54,000 and it can go up till like 70,000, like till this, Point, not consider 71 but 70 as we stick to the uh, uh, stick to our approach so you can see it has still a potential unlike many of the stocks these days like energy stocks they have lost potential few of them though they have still potential but air canada has a potential to grow up so it is good for the long-term investment and from the swing trade also seems to be good number one volumes are above uh, above average it has a potential upward and macd has you know shown a neutral trend it was going down Okay, it had a bearish trend. Now it is turned to a neutral and if stock behaves well on Monday, so it will be going to uh, an upward momentum, a strong momentum, momentum will increase and you can see an upward shift and divergence uh, in the in MACD. So that's what from the MACD point of view, MACD is about to swing ab above and this one is has got a room, RSI is saying yes. Uh, MACD I will say it's a neutral, it's not saying uh, yes or no, but uh, RSI is saying yes, volume is saying yes. Uh, candle is indecisive, but lower price rejection saying yes, and overall market trend is up for AC. So it can be, you know, considered for buying. That's fine. Thanks, Pat. Welcome. Uh, yes, guys, any other stock? Although there is still a few points that we can discuss on AC, but let's move on to the next stocks. Can we, can we, check uh, can we discuss on NBR? Okay, and we are before going that one point just very quick. I want to mention this here, which was a shift in the trend in AC. Guys, here very very important to see the opening price on this day was twenty three, and the closing price was below. Uh, opening price was here uh, twenty point three five, and it closed below. Okay, then it gave a gap down opening. Okay, and close here. So every day it was giving see the gap gap every day gap 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 it was uh, giving you a gap down opening 
the last session, if you notice, it has given a gap up opening. So if this trend continues, it gives a gap up opening again. Because why I'm saying this? Because when it opened here also, when it opened, uh, the closing price was above the opening price of that day. Are you following me? Although it had a gap down opening, gap down opening means that people don't want to buy this. Uh, it is it has a bearish trend, uh, bearish trend. People were not confident of buying this, but still it closed above. And the next day, since it was closed above, there was a shift in the investor's mindset. Here they were saying that it will go down. So that's why the stock market opened at a gap down. Here, uh, when, when the session closed, the, op the closing price was higher than the opening price. So during the session, there was a positive sentiment. That's why the next day it gave a gap up opening. And the opening price and closing price was almost the same. There was like only five cents difference. So if this send positive sentiment continues, it will give a gap up opening. So answering you, your question from another point of view, if it gives a gap up opening on Monday, then you will see a strong price, upward price movement on Monday. And it will continue till this resistance level. So like if you see a gap up, then buy it right away. Yeah, if you, not right away. First 15 minutes, 30 minutes are very important because many of the short, short sellers are there. They open it because people are saying saying it from the same, same point of view as we are saying. Gap up opening, higher price, yeah. they buy it at the higher price and after 15 minutes, they will dump and the price yeah. will go down. So oh. observe it in first 30 minutes because if you open at the gap up price and then you will not be able to recover that price till the, until afternoon. Okay. So you will stay in loss till afternoon. So observe the market, see the volumes when the volumes are high by at that point of view, but at that point of time and first half an hour, one hour is very volatile. Okay, means we should try to stay away then first half an hour, just watch the market. First, exactly. First half an hour, just stay away. But you know, sometimes it happens. Like it, it didn't come down. It's it followed its upward trend the whole day. It oh, opened a gap up, and then it up, 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 and up, and you didn't get a chance to to buy at low price. But it happens. Okay. So, but still, first 15, 20 minutes, just watch the market. Like Kamal, Kamal's strategy is like he buys like at the end of the day. At the end of the day is also a good point to buy. So you, yeah, you can because not develop not everyone strategy. can monitor the price in real time, especially during working hours. Yeah. Kamal mm -hmm. had a valid point there. Yeah, yeah, and from that point of view, yes, this is a good strategy. But uh, what I'm saying is like, if it is gap up opening, don't just rush and buy it. Because after 15, 20 minutes, you will see. Follow the trend trend of that stock in past few days. Open up the chart and see how it is behaving in first 15 minutes and the first, uh, first one hour. To see the trend, how that stock goes. Makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, and just to add to that, um, as I had covered previously as well, that since you would have followed the trend, studied the trend of last one week, one month, you know what could be, what could be the support levels it might touch. So set your limit buys so that even um, if, if it goes once to that limit price, your order will get executed. So you'll have yeah, it. Exactly. You don't need to, you know, monitor uh, every time, but you're not sitting in front of the screen all the time right. and you are, you're at work. So determine your buy levels when you're buying the stock, determine your support level. So uh, when it hits that support level at any point of time during the day, it will, you know, it will be bought. Right. But okay. what few of the stocks I will say, like you, you are interested in, like monitor it. So you will have a very better, you know, you cannot trade in each and every stock. There are thousands of stocks in the market. You cannot trade in every one, but you will have some favorites. So monitor those favorites better closely. Right. Okay, yeah, next talk was someone was saying NBR. What is that? N NBR? Yeah, it's neighbor industries. Yeah, NBR. And neighbor industries, yeah. New York? Yeah. yeah. Okay. New York stock is saying neighbor industries. It seemed to be in upward. Okay. Let's talk about the price first. The price. Let's start, we are in on a one day chart. The price went up till this level of 84. Let's see, let's zoom out. See, it seemed to have, you know, a resistance at this level 
you can see someone had a question how to find resistance just have a look how i'm drawing the line so this level seem to be seem to have a resistance here at this point because at this point was tested several times or if i can make it sometimes you know when you it's not just a straight line it's a channel and yeah. during in that channel it is resisting so yeah so that was a channel you see here multiple times here resist resistance resistance it was not able to you know break this point um, and go down so it was acting as a support at this point so support uh, also becomes resistance when it is trying to go up again okay so here also you can see it touched at this point a few times and here when it was trying to break it it was not able to so it um, it acted as a resistance which was a previous support for this stock and it start falling down from here so this is the support and let's talk about the resist uh, this is the resistance and let's talk about the support where this stock can take a support you can do a back testing till like at least one year you can go easily so previously i cannot see any point beyond this three four month period so if we talk about the support level what can be the support of this stock so this stock seem to you know have a support at yeah this level those who don't know how to you know calculate the support uh, just focus when i'm doing this uh, making these lines so you will have slowly and gradually you will you know get an idea how we draw a support and resistance lines so see this point when it was going down here it took a support at this level okay and this point actually prevented the stock price from falling beyond this level and this has been tested previously like here it tried to cross this but it didn't so it will act as a resistance here and then again at this point same day it was not able to cross it opened it here and it fell down so the stock price was prevented from this point to go to go above so it was acting as a resistance and once it broke this line and then it reached its next level of resistance when it is falling down again so previous resistance will now become a support so as you can see it has uh, you know actually respected this line and it took a support from this level then again it went started going up so the good thing about this stock is like if i zoom it it gave a gap up opening okay number one number two which is not actually a good sign that it closed below their opening price the opening price was 53.54 rounding off and the closing price was like 52.7 so although it opened at a gap up and people were expecting this stock to go up but during the trading session on the last day it has actually shown a downward trend and has lost a few dollars okay and the other point which is like alarming at this stage is there is an upside price rejection upward price rejection price hit till a level of 60.72 but it couldn't sustain that point and the bears pull the price back again to a level of 54 the bulls tried to put pull it up till 60 but they were not successful in sustaining this price level and bears pull it down again back to the level of 54 and again back to the level of actually you can say 50.94 and then there was a little upward movement and the, and the stock gave a closing at the level of 52.30 so this is an upside price rejection which is not good for this stock although you there is a there is a chance that you will see the um, it, the price it is opening either at the same level or it is a gap down opening again tomorrow so this stock uh, is you know very crucial to look at how it is behaving in uh, on monday morning gap up or gap down gap up chances are less gap down chances are little and there is a chance that it might open at the same level and if it goes uh, how it will behave in the coming week that it will go again at the level of 82.7 80, 80, from 82 to uh, 85 it will reach here and then it can bounce back again so your trading strategy if you are holding this and you are in profits whether you are in loss even so hold it 
till and wait till it and if it uh, start going up wait till it reaches the level of 82 to 85 and then realize the profit so when it touches this it will either go beyond this level or it fall back if it goes beyond this level and crosses the level of 85 then you can re-enter the trade after it has actually crossed 86 okay and has formed one green candle above this line it's not like this it crossed this level here made a candle here and you enter this trade and start going down uh, then you can say oh it crossed the resistance then why it fall back after resistance you need to have a confirmation at least one day confirmation one green candle confirmation only then you enter the trade otherwise it can be a false breakout as it happened in case of air canada air canada broke its resistance of 22 it gave closing at 23 so most of the people saying okay yes including like uh, many many of the guys they they enter at, the, at that level of 23 hoping that it has crossed the resistance and it go further up but it was a false breakout and fell back down so same can happen with any of the stock so just to summarize this hold this till it reaches the level of 82 and sell it realize your profit so if it goes crosses 85 yeah, you want to rebuy this depending the scenario at that time rebuy and make profits above or if it goes down again after this touching this level then you can re-enter in the trade and you can again buy this stock at 44 and yeah. if i say the volumes volumes are a little low because uh, during the last two three days because of this upside price rejection here then upside price rejection here okay and this is we call it uh, uh, and this uh, candle with the uh, upside price rejection so again you can see either same kind of candle forming here again but you cannot see upside price rejection every day and maybe there's a gap up so likely that be uh, same price or uh, a gap down maybe volumes are a little low but uh, so if it continues the same way it can grow up rsi is saying yes macd is converging which is not a good sign yeah you're saying something so finally you suggest uh, i should sell it uh, if it touches around 80 right uh, just below 82 yes you can say 80 and uh, if you are in profit we'll sell it yeah okay okay thanks thank you okay welcome okay. okay yeah next guys mir can you look at mir sorry mir mir okay let me know we have two in stock in new york and i think we're talking about this yeah okay let's have a closer look here okay so it, it doesn't has have a long history yeah uh, it is it doesn't have a history of you know sustaining at these price levels but still we can you know uh, see so for the long time uh, you know long term it's not recommended yeah, but it, it has, never reached right. never reached that level yeah, it has gained momentum because of this COVID. The Corona thing, yeah, because the Corona pharma pharma industry is up. So pharma, if it has a you know history of maintaining high prices, uh, only then you can plan a long term. But if it has a history of high price, then at this point of time, it will not be at the lower price levels because it's pharma. So you'll not find any very rare to find any pharma stock which is at lower price at this point, and it had a history of high price. If had if it had a history of high price, then why it will be at the lower price during these days? Yes or no? Yeah. What do you think, guys? Uh, yes, yes, I agree because I'm working in the healthcare company. Yeah. So okay. Then you will have you know very yeah. in depth idea. Guys, the other guys are sleeping or what? <laughs> yeah, I say it as a seasonal stock. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. But the price itself okay. of the share doesn't look promising i can remember there was a discussion mm -hmm. uh, avoid mm -hmm. dealing in penny stocks or stocks yeah. which are having immaterial value exactly but you know everyone has a different definition of the penny stock for kamal it's 0.4 for me it's one dollar yeah that's true <laughs> okay. okay so I, yeah, yeah so and um, yeah, yeah to, uh, also people might be wondering why i say 0.4 um because i use well simple trade and it has a condition that for stock to be traded on well simple trade they have uh, this particular condition that the 52 week max of the stock should be at least 0.5 or higher or mm. its volume should be greater than um, 50k um, if i'm okay. correct so 
the reason why i chose point 04 is that stock i am sure that it would be crossing point 5 in 52 weeks and even though it is point 04 it its 52 week history would have somewhere crossed point 5 recently in either um, at least one month or two month which means it gives one year period for the stock to be traded on well simple trade um, am i being clear so you are saying that if it is at point 4 then it can go it can cross point 5 Yeah. to be there in and if it has already crossed point 5 in the last month then it might not go again so if, if it has if in the last 12 months it has not crossed point 5 last 12 not said 12 10 8 8 months then it is a chance that in next one or two months it can it has to go beyond point 5 what i'm saying is if in last one or two months if mm-hmm. it has crossed point 5 which has made it eligible to be traded on well simple for another 10 months yeah okay so yeah. which means that it won't be delisted from well simple trade for trading for another 10 to 12 months exactly so, so what if if we have a stock and it gets delisted for a year and then what happens next sorry i didn't get your question i mean it if it doesn't go beyond 0.5 or doesn't touch it mm-hmm. and it is get it is delisted from well simple and we we are holding the stock so what still it is listed in the stock exchange it's only one broker will not be trading in that because of the broker policy but still it, it will be listed in the market whether it be nasdaq new york or dsx you will be having it only from the broker point of view uh, you need to ask that broker exactly um, from broker channel it might not be available for trading further trading but if someone has it he owns it because yeah. you have the rights attached to that you are a shareholder so only broker is not supporting any further on this uh, stock but you are holding this th- uh, in the market through that broker so you have the rights still you are yeah, the so maybe so maybe i'll open a quest trade uh, or any other broker and then i'll request them to transfer make it available okay yeah and more question yeah one more question for example if if you buy a share today uh, do we need to wait for at least 2 to 3 days to sell it up or we can sell it next day itself what is the background of this question i would like, be interested to know, know more about this you know like in india we have this uh, like if you are holding a share uh-huh. uh, we cannot sell it uh, i mean uh, if you buy a share today we cannot sell it next day yeah. uh, you need to have uh-huh. a t plus uh, t plus 2 t plus 2 okay T plus two, uh, you know, uh, you can sell it even the next second. You can sell it, and T plus two transaction. I'm not sure how it is working in in India. In Pakistan, we can sell it. You know, the intraday trader how they do it. They no, buy it. No, intraday we can it. do it. No, intraday you we can, can do it. But what happens like once the, we buy it and then the market closes, uh-huh. and the next day if we want to sell it, we cannot sell it. Okay, in uh, in Pakistan we can sell it, and here also we can sell it. I have also done, I think, yeah. So you you can sell it. The only thing is, uh, it takes T plus two is the settlement process. At the end of T plus two, uh, on T plus two actually you get the this share in, under your name. But here uh, still now I have also been trying to find out this uh, time frame of T plus two or whether it is T plus one here. But I, I'm still not able to find this link. But overall idea remains the same that T plus two. There, there is no restriction. First to answer you, you question, there is no restriction if you can sell it you know, on T or T plus one. That's that, that answers your question. The next question is. And the settle next, which I think it further, the settlement process. The settlement process in many of the countries, in on many of the stock exchanges, takes T plus two, as we have in our in India and Pakistan. T plus two is the settlement date. Here, what is the settlement settlement date? Still, I'm not able to find whether it is done at the same day. Normally, for bonds, it is either T plus zero, we can say T or T plus one. For the stocks. I'm still trying to find out. If someone gets to know about the settlement date here in TSX or in NASDAQ, please do let me know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, guys. Um, let's uh, discuss MIR. Okay, we are you know going beyond our scheduled time, but uh, at any point of time you want me to stop, we, we will stop. 
okay now it's all upon you guys till the time you guys show in close we will keep on and because the timing difference in in some of the countries are is not favorable though it's a weekend but it's it, uh, it's all depend depend upon you as long as you guys want me to continue and you're showing interest we we will continue or if the participant level falls down then we have to close it currently we are 18 and i think we have lost two or three maybe due to that was time frames okay mir but guys please do speak do show interest i don't know why a few of the guys like ejaz imran franklin pankaj pankaj i think he contributed and there was vakas said well, guys don't sleep uh, sorry, what is the strategy for me hello yeah yeah no i will oh, yeah. start speaking together <laughs> hello yeah, go ahead go ahead one by one guys Yeah so this is Franklin uh yeah, I'm still a new trader I'm trying to like you know grasp uh, everything you're saying right so okay yeah when I do have a question or ask but for now I'm just trying to learn the sure. stuff right so yeah okay good um so far guys how how the session is going still we are like at the very beginning of our this trading sessions like this is the third session we are conducting and how you feel about this session please do let us know so that we can improve on and how far this how good or bad this current session is going do let me know you you are like, like you are gaining something or like how uh, i'm doing how I, am i behaving with this session am i too fast or too slow or like uh, i go very quickly do let me know so that you know we can uh, work on that yeah. hey, like i would like to add one thing like yeah. you are explaining this whole concept of candlestick and we are looking mm-hmm. at the support price and the resistance mm-hmm. price but some of us are not accountants so mm-hmm. for them the jargon may be a little hard to understand if, especially if they are joining the session for the mm-hmm. first time to listen from you yeah so true that, yeah mm-hmm. like prabhakar i remember he mentioned something like he is starting to read the financials and he has some queries na mm-hmm. so i think maybe we should have a basic session mm-hmm. maximum i think 15 20 minutes just to understand this whole candlestick analysis like how do you determine what's the support price what's the okay. resistance price yeah fine when uh, we started our session actually the first day we discussed about this and those guys who are new they will have this problem but those guys who are with us like from last three weeks when we had a first session i hope uh, they can recall that we discuss about the support and resistance and few things like that but still we can have a you know a separate session on that and i'm planning to make one small video on this so that you guys can you know if you can go and check it out there also and we can include in our upcoming session the support and resistance and by the way do you know you don't need to be from the finance or accounting background if you want to you know calculate the support and resistance it's it's uh, just a simple thing right yeah. uh, okay looking forward yeah. to it thank you man sure yeah. sure yeah. Yeah. yeah so i was yeah, yeah we can yeah. one by one guys yeah uh, we'll be in the next session we can start with that basic uh, if the video i will is, touch upon i will touch yeah. upon yeah. okay yeah aman was saying something aman yeah uh, this is pankaj actually i have a yeah, suggest like uh, yeah i am sure people would start getting interested if people are joining so every time they would be in the same situation when you have new joiners so exactly. as you suggested it's always good to have the basic session recorded as expanded yep. as possible so that you can just give them then they can view it but otherwise you'll spend a lot of time every yeah. Yeah. repeating the same thing that's what i was uh, i was also yeah. referring to the same like every two or three weeks later we will have like bunch of people who don't know right. support and right. resistance so, so, so uh, the only thing had been like our first video first session which was on support resistance was not recorded and uh, that's why we lost it so i will record a separate session uh, on this and then you know if, if someone wants it he can go and view it yeah okay so let's move on to mir uh-huh. yeah someone is saying yeah so one more suggestion to yeah. so like if we want to make any comment i think there is an option of raising hand so we don't all talk at the same time so we can just click on the right hand option then you can call anyone that wants to speak okay yeah i think that that's a good idea so what what is it called raising hand or uh, yeah raise your hand if you click on more uh, the three dots yeah you see where the chat okay uh, yeah. um, raise hand yeah so it's there we have okay i i will look on into it fine thank you thank okay you. yeah okay mir let's get back to mir 
without further delay. MIR has first, it doesn't have a very strong history of reaching at the higher levels. Okay, and currently it was in a downward trend here and it took a support. Let me draw, uh, guys watch cl closely when I draw, draw the support lines. So it has taken actually a support at this level. So why this is a support? Because it is price, this line, uh, this price of 0 0.39596 has prevented the stock from going below this level mul multiple times. One time here and this second time, at least it should be two times. And here it acted as a resistance and prevented it from going above this point. So as I mentioned, a resi previous resistance once broken, next time it becomes support. It was resistance here, it resisted, resisted almost. Re it didn't resist it here, it actually crossed. And then when it was coming down again, the next time the previous resistance becomes a support point and it has actually honored the support line two times. So it has like one, in number two, you can say here two and very close and three and four, four instances. So it can be considered as a strong support line 0 0.39 and how long it can go. You will be interested in knowing because you guys are holding. So here, red line red line okay let it be more clear i should have a little thin line here yep this one's better so at this point this point or little low yes this point can act as a resistance of 6.99 or you can say 0 0.7 but this one shouldn't be your target. Your target should be 0 0.64. 0 0.64 or 6.3. 6.3 should be your current target. In the, you can say immediate target. If you talk about immediate target, by the way, it is 0 0.57. So it will hit 0 0.57 and then it will, you know, start, may start falling down or start resisting at that point before it goes further up. So you can set your target at max, max at 0 0.64 or 63 or if you want to realize it early 0 0.55 57 you can realize your profit at 0 0.57 as well if you can you see that stock is resisting at 0 0.5758 and it is not going beyond and it is touching 5758 and going back again so sell it 0.57 and then buy it back again when it's going down so but if it is not resisting at 0.57 and goes further up then your target should be 0 0.64 sell it and again, the same strategy, it can go down from 0 0.64. Actually, it will go a little up 0 0.65, but don't wait till this point. Okay, 0 0.64, just below the resistance level, you need to sell it, your TP should be, target profit should be just below the resistance level. Again, it will have like two situations. From 0 0.64, it will either, uh, 0 0.69, this resistance level, it goes up. If it goes up, then buy again, but the chances that it will go up are like little. Guys, very important, when I say go up, the, I always refer, or everyone always refer to the price, the closing price, not the price, the high price during that day. So if I talk about this candle on this day, very important to note, guys, 26th of May, the price, it went till 0.85, but it didn't give a closing. So you will not consider 0.85. You will always consider the closing price point here, 0 0.67. So the stock price was, went high from this level to this level of 0 0.7. Don't consider this because it was not able to sustain this price. So what I'm saying here is at 0 0.69, if it touches here and gives a green candle above and one day confirmation on the next day, only then you can re-enter from the upper side. But the chances are like it will not cross this level. Uh, and even if it crosses like it here, then you need to see if either it is giving a closing above this resistance level or not. Like here it, it crossed, but it didn't give a closing above this resistance level. So it acted as a fine support, a fine resistance at that level. Again, the same situation can be here, but don't confuse yourself. You say, oh, uh, we discussed in our session, like if it crosses 0 0.7 or if it is the resistance line, then you can enter. No, you need to understand it clearly. When I say crosses, it means the closing price should be on closing price on that day should be above 0 0.69. Here it didn't it did not cross, although it gave a high during that day, but it did not cross actually. If the same situation occurs, don't mix it. When I say crosses, it give a closing above this level of uh, 0 0.7, and the next day it gives a green candle above this point, then you can enter. But 
that was the general for all, uh, all stocks. But here again, coming back to analyze Medmira, it is like uh, uh, if you are holding the stock, first level consider 0 0.57. If it is resisting, it will be a, a you know a weaker one though. Uh, you can. Uh, you know, sell this and rebuy back again at below levels, but uh, better to, you know, hold till 0 0.64 and then sell it. And if it goes further down again, then you can buy it. Hope that clears. And let me check the volumes. Volumes are low and it can start going down again. It has you know, consistently low volume during the past months. So it's not a very, very favorable stock at this point of time, but if it gains momentum, it can. So uh, because of the RSI upward movement, RSI has still, you know, uh, uh, you can say a space. Uh, it has, you know, a space to go up further. It has 54. It is above 50 upward trend. It is an upward trend. RSI says yes, volumes are a little low. And MACD has, you know, it it is uh, not recommending actually to buy this stock at this point because uh, the signal, the MACD line, the blue line is below below the red line so it has you know started converting when it converges and actually crosses this line that is the buying point for macd those guys who have who are not familiar of this macd we have a video in our channel you can go and uh, see the video those guys this is for those who have uh, you're joining it for the first time and don't know what is what the macd is what it tells you can go and have a look at that video thank god we have a recorded session for macd unless unlike our first session. So I will be sharing the link after the call. So you can go, though it is a very long session, if you can, similar to today's session, if you are interested, you can go and check and see what the MACD is. So as for the MACD, uh, the buying signal has not yet created until it crosses this level. Uh, RSI, yes. And MACD is through the past trend. So still, you know, it lags behind the lagging indicator. Uh, and uh, that's what it is. If you want to take an entry now on Monday, see how it behaves, but the upside uh, will be, you know, minimized. If uh, it opens, like let's say at the same level of, for example, at 0 0.5, and the upside will be 14, 0 0.64 will target, 14 cents will be the upside, and the downside is 10. So it is risk to reward ratio is also fine in the stock. Yeah. Guys. Yeah, two points to add with, um, as you guys have observed, um, based on what Tahir has um, mentioned in the analysis is that this sh stock is for short term. Since it doesn't have a long history, uh, holding it for long term, um, there's no reference as in how long you want, you would like to hold. So prefer this stock to begin with considering that you would be holding it for short term. And that's where um, the Tahir, uh, the selling points or the resistance levels which Tahir has mentioned would be a good reference for you to decide on, on what price you would set as your sell limits. And second point which I would like to um, add to this is uh, coming back to Pankaj's point on whether you should be holding your stock or selling it. So for this particular stock, um, both Tahir and me, we are saying that you should be selling because in this uh, analysis, you could see that the stock has a tendency to go at a price which could be lower than your average price. So if a stock goes at uh, lower than your average price, you could buy sell it at the price, make, make your profit. And then once it again goes lower than your average price, buy it back. In which case you are not nullifying your profit. Hope you are getting this. Yep. Okay. Yes, guys, uh, any, any yeah. question on this or shall we move to the next stock? No, I think we can move. Uh, okay, next stock guys. Can we look at uh, SEL? Sorry, okay. Uh, Kamal, I think that's uh, these guys, participants say. Talk, <laughs> we are the host. At, can you look at talk? Uh, sorry? Oh, I think someone had mentioned that's why I said it's okay. Okay, okay, oh, fine. Yeah. Uh, no problem. Um, I yeah, know many of the guys, yeah. you have recommended MIR and SCR and almost all of the guys have, you know, uh, have taken this, these two stocks. So TOG, guys, you mentioned? TOG? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. people have mentioned in chat. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not looking at that. Uh, the chat uh, CFW. Right now. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so the, if we just and... if we need to focus on the ta- uh, on just on the chat, then YouTube was also not bad. The reason why we came on Zoom is like uh, you guys. I want you guys to you know to speak up to. So yeah, that's why so, I'm not uh, looking at that chat. No, I'm keeping an eye on chat. Uh, this SCL was uh, requested okay, by R- Ranjan. Let let them let these guys you know speak up instead of you know mentioning on the chat. <laughs> if you, yeah. you you just mention on the chat, then why not on the YouTube? Why on that's the that's the way how they're gonna speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the way that's they're going to speak. Agree. Let's go back again to YouTube. Contribution. Yeah. So if you, yeah. if you speak, then you will not sleep, actually. You know, it's good to hear from you. From uh, it, You know, it's uh, like a response from you guys. If like Kamal or me or like any, any host is not getting a response, you know, it, it doesn't look good or like there's a failure that people are not encouraged or people are not getting it. So, you know, uh, it, it depends on, on all uh, you guys that how much information you can, you can take from us. True, true. Uh, by the way, Franklin has raised his hand. I think he wants to ask us something, but he's muted right now. Okay, uh, Franklin, I don't know how to use this hand option here. So, <laughs> so next time I will explore this and then, you know, I will focus on this. But uh, for today's session, uh, you, instead of using hand, you can, you can raise your voice. No, I think that hand raising option was on YouTube, not on Zoom. No, I can see this raise hand option as well. Yeah, it's coming. At I will board. explore. Yeah. I will explore. Let's not, window. Yeah, let's not focus board. on functionality thing to save time and focus more on the technical thing. I will explore this. Yeah. So my oh, first I want us to work on uh, the FGY, uh, Deep God, and uh, which one again? TFW. Which stock? T God. T God. FGY. SGY. SGY. Yeah. Okay. I'll come to SGY after TOG. Yeah, okay. let's do that. Yeah. Okay, fine. Let's do a TOG. And uh, TOG, TOG, you know, 2.03 are at this level. Let's look, zoom out and look at the past trend of the stock. A oh, week went enough. Though it has a history and I will tell you one good thing about TOG for a long-term perspective. Let's draw the resistance line first and then I will tell you that thing. Okay, so this point is a resistance point for this stock and the support level that's the support level Okay, so this is the support and resistance for the stock. Let's zoom and check on this is behaving. So you can see from the previous sessions, it made a high of 2.12. And then it started falling down because this was this acted as the resistance level. 2.12 start falling down, 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 and it came till here. It took a support and immediate support. If you can draw uh, one support line here as well to be called as S1, and this should be the S2. It took a support from here, then um, started uh, going up. And so now the next, uh, you know, the target should be this level 2.07. Those guys who have this hold it till it goes 2.07, and again the support level will remain the same of 1.61. And the candle is very dangerous. Why dangerous? Because uh, it is a dodgy candle again. Dodgy is always an indecisive candle. What is a dodgy? And these names which I am using, uh, I will be covering it in our next session. So we have not read this. So. I will try not to use these names, but uh, I'm just trying to make you familiar. This is called as Doji. Next few sessions, we have, you know, guys, many things to cover, fundamental, candlestick pattern, chart pattern, few more indicators, and then back to some few basics again. So there are a lot many things to do, to lot many things to discuss, and slowly and gradually we, we will cover. And there is no end point to this learning but for the basics we will cover gradually so this is a few of the things like you can you can understand while we are discussing this uh, like this candle you can remember this candle with a high upper wick and a lower wick and there is no body here by the way this is the body this rectangular frame is a body and this stick which is up or down this is called as a wick so it is a high upper wick unlike this candle uh, these candles here high upper wick high uh, and the lower wick is also high and this body is very small means opening and closing price was the same in, at, in TOG. So how to analyze this is like bulls tried to pull the price up at 
and then the bears pulled the price down to 1.71 then bulls came again and it moved the price up and finally it closed at 1.76 the opening price and the closing price remain same to no one wins neither bulls win nor the bears win so they were like fighting with each other and no one was able to make the price to take the price either upward or downward so from the investor's point of view like both are at the same position so this is called indecisive candle decision has not yet been made upon the fate of this stock upon the fate of the price of this stock so for the next day candle uh, let's see how it behaves but the good thing is it gave a gap up opening on the last session and if it gives a gap up opening again and uh, let's talk about the volume how, how the volumes volumes were like below average little below if the volumes on the next session are high then you will see this stock going up and it has a potential of going up based on the rsi which has shown an upward trend it has it has still space to go up and as soon as it reaches 70 it will fall back again as you can see this level here it moved above 70 and it was uh, due to be uh, to be corrected and fall down but still now here at this point it has a space it has a margin it has a capacity to go up and it will go up so this stock to summarize is in upward trend and it will go up again till the level of 2.12 so your target profit should be 2.05 for the very short term perspective and your you know stop loss can be any point between 1.71 to 1.61 uh, or it, either it can be below safe to below uh, 1.61 below the support level always the stock uh, the your uh, stop loss so volumes just average from this point of view rsa point of view good buy you can buy and here it has converged to actually the zero thing and whenever this there is the convergence it means that there is uh, it is about to there is an indication that there will be a change in the trend very soon which we can see from the MACD point and the next day if it goes the uh, if it behaves well on monday so you will see the stock this uh, blue line going above so MACD will also be yes rsa yes volume neutral uh, currently MACD is neutral you can say rsa positive volume neutral and dodgy candle is indecisive all behave that all depends upon the monday opening price monday opening price first hour session it will decide yes guys any questions on tog hello no all, all good okay okay fine so the next was so guys we will uh, take next 15 minutes and then we will end the session as we can see the participant level going down and i think it has to be like uh, no it's more than two hours it's not good to you know keep everyone waiting for like more than like two hours it's already two or 15 minutes so we'll ending like next 15 so it can be like two and a half hours which is still a very very long time frame but uh, can we do a little analysis of t god before going just like one or two minutes just a quick view uh next stock okay i will picking another one sds someone said and then you start S S -G -Y. S -G -Y. S -G -Y. Yeah. S -G -Y. Yeah. and then the stock you were saying sure in energy surge energy yeah toronto okay sgy sgy okay uh, sorry one thing i was saying that one thing good for tog let me go back okay the good thing is here for tog guys it see this gap the market has created a huge gap previously in month of march whenever there is a gap the stock will always fill up the gap so it has a potential to go to three if you are a long-term investor you you can hold this till it goes to 2.9 2.98 or three very important to see see your strategy long-term investor when it will go you never know but eventually it will go because it has and it might not be like going like straight till three it will go here move a little plunge down dip consolidate and then go up but eventually it has a potential to go to three because it has created a gap whenever there is a gap is a gap down or gap up stock will always always fill that gap okay so this is from the investors sgy sure energy sure energy i will be real quick on this sure energy sure energy support level resistance level of you can say this is not a very strong one what it has shown a resistance you can say at uh, this level a weaker one though because here we have a week not a closing and here we have you know the opening price 
and then the support level yeah so this can be a support level for this stock and although uh, the first support is little higher than this this is the immediate support uh, which i'm drawing now No, this is actually not a support. Well, it is not honoring this. This can be a support. All it it came like near about the support. It it's never like hundred percent support level and resistance level are the indicators that it can go till this level. So it you know came uh, and uh, it made a lower point of uh, a, point, a lower point which is close to its support level and started to going up so the upside of this stock is 0.54 and the downside of this stock is 0.32 and upside is when i say up zero point you can you know uh, 0.4 so upside is more and downside is less so risk to reward ratio is positive you can enter in this stock and rsi is the same analysis like tog we call all the energy stock by the way you will find uh, the same analysis so we might not be discussing more energy stocks today the energy stocks i have seen like you can also go and open this chart and see you will see the same trend uh, average volumes not a very high volume either little low or at the average uh, the rsi has gone up okay showed upward shift and macd is either converged or converging so the same analysis for all the energy stocks based on current scenario so um, for the important thing is like upside is upside is good you can risk reward ratio is fine you can you can enter in this straight and you can hold it till 0 0.5 0 0.50 yep this guys the next talk what you were saying uh, it, it was t gold t gold t gold gold g o d gold t gold yeah Anyone uh, trading in the gold market? I mean to say any any stocks in the gold, like Barrick or some other? Yeah, I had Barrick yeah. and I sold it. <laughs> hmm. it, Those, up, it is a little volatile and it's good. Unlike like, uh, the, common, the, the oil prices, the crude oil. The crude oil is like low. When we talk about the stock prices, the oil energy se sector always look at the crude price. The crude price is like under pressure these days. So you will find many energy stocks down, but this is the good uh, buying time. Okay, okay. T or T got zoom out. This is the ultimate resistance. I will draw the ultimate resistance here. Okay. But before hitting this resistance level, it will have a resistance here at this point too. But well, this was the turning point. This will not be a very strong one, but still it can act as a resistance here. So this is this is the channel 0 0.61 to 65. You will see the resistance. So you are uh, if you are here now, this this stock is you know currently it's near its resist support level. It has taken a support, and actually this stock looks good. Why? Because it has a downside price rejection. The price uh, the a market rejected the downward price of 0 0.41. Number one, it it opened at the same point. There's no gap up, okay? No gap up or gap down. And number, it, this is neutral. And the good point is like the down downward trend, uh, downward uh, price rejection. So downward price rejection and closing price was uh, actually it, it opened a little low. Uh, the opening, sorry, this one opening and the closing. So there was a gap of opening. Yes. There was a gap of opening for this stock, and then uh, the price closed above the opening price. That's why it's green. The two points. The third point is downside price rejection, and this candle we normally call it a hammer. 
MR is a type of candle in which there is a downside price rejection and the wick is three times the size of the body. Just remember it when we will discuss, I will give you more details on that. So this is hammer. Whenever the hammer candle is formed, there is a change in the trend and it indicates upward trend. So you will see this will be in upward trend. Two things to consider here. Gap up opening last time formed a green candle, downside price rejection, hammer candle. So this all indicates a bullish trend in the stock. So this stock is going to be bullish. So you, if you're holding this stock, hold it till it reaches this level of 0 0.660 where you can plan your uh, you is selling and then you can re-enter the trade whenever it is feasible. RSI, the same, the same comment going up positive. Uh, MACD is about to, you know, uh, change the trend. It, uh, though it has given a little shift, but Monday movement will be very important in, in for the for the MACD point of view. Volumes are although still low, many of the guys are not, uh, you know, I'll trading in this. Please. Yep. So for this seed guard, will it be wise to like set uh, a limit sell for six strand by Monday? I'm not getting you. There is, uh, you know, a noise at the background. Can you repeat? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so my question is, um, will it be wise to now set a uh, uh, limit sell for this stock on Monday to 60 cents? Yes, yes you can. But let's okay. see, if. It, but I'm not sure if it's going to this point in on Monday. It will go at this level, but when this is, you know, depends on the market movements. Maybe you can find this stock, you know, showing a resistance at this level. It can also, you know, act as a resistance. Let me draw a line here as well. From yes. my perspective, hold it for the little more time because they recently yep. had a tie up with shoppers. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all the t goods products are going to sell on the shoppers. And mm -hmm. that was the day when uh, that share rise up to 0.6. So once market will be open, open you will see uh, big changes in the stock price because shoppers are the mm -hmm. one of the biggest uh, uh, medicine market in yeah. canada so so you got they got the tie up with the shoppers they are definitely going to be increasing sales if uh, you want to hold it for a little bit long it it would be better because uh, in the end of june uh, ontario and other other provinces are going to be open like yeah. now they are opening in the second phase they are going to open in the full flesh third phase so you can see big changes in the month of july if if you can hold it for that time otherwise uh, you can if if you want to uh, have some like 20% 25% or 30% profit from your investing you can get in like coming weeks very easily exactly so uh, from that point of view uh, if you are like doing a swing trade that will be more likely short to medium trend uh, investing uh, so you you can hold it and any news guys if there is a news i always say follow the news all the fundamental technicals they become zero in front of news so like you have, uh, you guys you know while we are discussing some stocks if you are aware of any of the news whether related to these stocks which we are discussing or any other stock as well just share the news for the benefit of all so uh, since there is a news it can you know even break this uh, when the market is open it can, it can even break this resistance level since it has a history of, of this going up so the answer is currently it is an uptrend hope that answers now we, we will take the last talk for the day and we will finish this session and we will meet in our next sessions yes guys the last talk scl please this is ajaz sure sure yes scl scl shock thank you welcome SCL will not disappoint you, I'll say. <laughs> yeah. Because I think most members in this group has monitored this talk this week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you and I you and I bought at 3.35 and then it dropped to 2.65 or six yeah. and I was like <laughs> It was like I was like, I should wait for some more time. <laughs> I don't have it now. Just wondering when should I enter? Oh. Yeah. So, um, for guys uh, who have started taking interest in SCL, I would say um, those who didn't buy up to Thursday, um, just hold on. It's again showing upward trend, and wait yeah. for its next dip to buy it. 
So let me real quick here. This is the resistance and this is the support level here. Support level, you can say this one actually. Okay, let me change the color. Support level. I hope the lines are visible or I need to make it a little bold. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a resistance 5.09. Mm, little, little bit. Yep, almost five. This is the resistance level, and the support level is for this stock seems to be at 2.37, although it didn't uh, touch exactly at 2.37, but here it touched, you know, multiple times. It was a very very close to its support level so that's one point here and uh, this stock is in currently up upward trend and it has the potential to go till five so you can have your uh you know your target price price around five four point nine or something you can you can easily have four point nine as your target price and it is positive rsa positive yes it has uh, macd also yes positive it has started diverging volumes are extraordinarily high almost like double than the average volume and for the from the last three days also the volumes were high so i'm expecting a gap up opening here and if you find a gap up opening don't enter after that because then the upside will be very less think from the risk risk reward ratio upside will be less like it will be around a dollar or even less around a dollar on average and the downside will be more than a dollar currently at this point who have this at um, at this point it will you will be holding now like if you uh, currently you if you're holding then you need to wait till it reaches the resistance level and it might not break the resistance level and fall down it's the first time it is hitting this level of footer it has started you know plunging down so hold it till it's support till it reaches five sell it again and buy it again now so if you have not yet bought so be very 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 careful because i'm expecting a gap up opening and then the upside will be very less on this stock and downside will be little more risk and reward ratio might not hold good if you buy at the higher price in the coming sessions yeah okay. Yeah, Any comments here? Yeah. Yeah. And just to add to Tahir's analysis, those who are currently holding this stock and planning for long term, um, I would suggest to keep it uh, for long term. As you can see from its um, history, yeah. that its average before COVID is quite high. So yeah, you can see 11. It's it has you know if uh, the next by the way the next uh, level can be can be 11 in a, uh, in not a very long term in you know you can say in a couple of months a few months you will see this when we are open back again so it can easily reach till 11 this is for the investors not for the swing traders yeah so uh, those who are having it our recommendation would be to keep it for at least for two months it might give you better yep. Uh, higher return. yeah but again uh, again you know um, it all depends upon your strategy you are an investor or you are a trader if you are a trader you can never hold this at uh, for two months and uh, you know you can say i'm i will be you know holding my let's say one thousand dollar one thousand uh, stock one thousand shares and i will be like at, let's say if i buy to three three thousand dollars and then i'm getting again i'm selling it at eleven thousand so i i will get again of like eight thousand Okay, eight thousand dollars in two months, which is not bad actually. But let's say if it is two months or what time frame. But if you see that in those two months, I can make even more than eight thousand. If you see, then go with that. It all depends upon your strategy. But you know, going for the business, going risk free is a good idea or yeah. minimal risk. So for us, um, since we are retail um, investing, and most especially for uh, numbers who are looking for long term, uh, it, my recommendation would be to hold. And if someone is, as Tahir mentioned, if someone is doing trading for short term, and uh, they could follow the levels okay. which uh, Tahir suggested. Yeah okay yeah uh, okay guys thank you very much for joining us today and i hope you enjoyed it still it's very good to see like still we have like retained so many like a good number till the end of like two and a half hours thank you for being <laughs> patient thank you for being with us for like two and a half hours and like credit goes to you like you thank you for bearing us for two and a half uh, two and a half hours and uh, we always you know try to stick it um, like one and a half hour but we never succeeded actually the first session i can recall it was like three 
three hours. So then again, uh, next last time two hours now in two and a half. So we'll try next time to stick to the timelines. Okay guys Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for joining you. if you still have some yes, questions sir. you can ask and uh, we will be uploading this video very soon And you can have your questions and some more videos coming in on the short short uh, Lessons like support resistance RSI and this stuff and you can go that way and uh, have a look If still you have questions feel free to ask. Okay guys. Thank you very much. Thank I'll be you, ending this call. Thank you. Goodbye Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tahir. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Kamal. Yeah. Bye. Have a nice weekend, guys. Yeah. yeah. You too. Bye.